Playing as a solo player in Escape from Tarkov can be one of the most challenging feats in modern day gaming. Honestly, when I started playing the game back in the beginning of 2019, I was terrified of going solo. Now, I almost exclusively play solo, but not only that, I actively seek out PvP during my raids because I'm confident that I can beat out other players. So, what's changed? What Tarkov hacks did I learn throughout the years that now allow me to thrive while playing solo? Well, allow me to show you. What you are about to see is crazy solo gameplay from my Tarkov stream on Twitch, but don't worry. I'll be with you for most of this video to explain what I'm doing and why I did it. Enjoy. Wait, wait, there we go, full auto. So you'll notice after I almost forgot to change my fire mode that as soon as I exit the factory door, I'm looking to my left and my right. And that's because there is an immediate spawn down the left hallway and there's a spawn right around the corner where you find the forklift. Before I head to the office area to get PMC kills from my quest, I have to check those spots first. You'll notice once I enter the office area, I take a few pauses and that's because I'm waiting for sound cues of my enemies so I can react to their movements. I'm trying to figure out what floor these guys are on. Down below me. So after I get this kill, I then dive into an area I know is safe to heal up because I do not want to keep fighting with a blacked out arm because then you get pretty inaccurate. Time to surgery up and get back in the action. Now that we're healed up, we are in pursuit of another player. I heard this player close by, so I turned on my flashlight and I'm making sure to check every angle because I don't know exactly where this player is. There you go. Two. This kill is a good example of the effectiveness of the flashlight. Sure, it gives your position away, but in close quarters, it can blind your enemies. In fact, I think the sole reason this KS-23 guy completely missed me is because he couldn't see me. Alright. Hmm. Oh my... Okay. I finished looting KS-23 men and headed to the extraction as the other PMCs were already dead. Time to head to customs for some dorms PVP. As I enter dorms here, I know there's already a PMC inside, so I want to limit my time in the doorway as much as possible. Doorways are easy ways to die in EFT. There's even someone behind me now. So my situation gets a bit interesting here when I hear the guy behind me. I know now that I can't peek the hallway or I'm dead to both players. So I decide to wait for the guy outside to come in to try to get the drop on him. After killing this guy behind me, I decide it's time to heal up and then go back in. As I'm planning on how to engage the other player inside, I want to talk a bit about awareness. It's important to realize at any given time where you can get shot from to avoid tunnel visioning. It is at this moment I realize that someone may be in the second story dorms. Unfortunately though, after we get this dorms kill, we do die to an invisible player, but you know what? That's okay. Not much we can do about that. Onwards to the next raid, which is one of the craziest preserve raids I've had in a long time. I could die right here from heaven. The spawn suck. There's a guy up there who can see me right now. The spawn suck.
Please no. Please no. Yeah, look, he's shooting at me. From up there. From up there. Look at that. Blowing right over my head. For those of you who don't know what's happening here, I am getting shot at by the big ball building. I called it heaven in the clip, but it's that massive military building with a massive ball on it that players can spawn at at the start of the raid. So if you get a field spawn like I did, the players that spawn up there can see you right away. Luckily though, I do make it to one of the night buildings and it is here where I will have a player scav army on my tail soon. He's still up there. He's bad. We're good. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not sure how many of you guys would just do that, but whatever. I don't, I don't care. He missed. Okay, can we open these? I forget. We can. I did see that guy who was running down this way. There he is. Of course. Of course, bro. Is he dead? It's around now when player scaffs start to flood my building. So I stay calm and I play this engagement out like I would play any engagement by listening for sound cues. And when I feel like it's time, I'll start my attack. Luckily though, I get one of these scavs who is oblivious to my location pretty early. Right after that kill, some scav on scav violence breaks out beneath me. So I run to the bathroom to take this time to pack my mags as I kind of shot two of my 50 rounders. Once my mags were packed, I then waited once again for my time to attack. Well, okay, one more kill, but the coast is not clear yet. I heard another scab coming, so I ran into a room and closed the door to make it seem like I wasn't there. Let's see if the strategy pays off. Oh my, there's another one. Bro, I'm never going to get out of here alive, aren't I? Where do we go from here now? Well, first, let's eat. I feel like. Like, that's a good start. Someone's back there, just jumped. Okay. Another player scav. <laughs> Another player scav. Woo! Okay. Even more. This is like almost zombie wave defense, it feels like at this point. Holy smokes. And I'm out of ammo, so to the extract we go. Another one? Oh my god. Wait, look at all these bodies. Another one? Two more, bro. Oh my god. We have no ammo left. 
We shot over 200 rounds, man. Holy shit. What the hell are these scavs? They're everywhere. There's four bo There's four bodies right here. No, five. Two outside. One. Oh my god. Oh my god. Another one. Immediately after getting this kill outside, I know that I don't have extra ammo to be spending here. I probably have about one 50 rounder left, so I have to ignore the rest of the scabs around the night building and head towards Raider Ball Building because I know I need to extract. But unfortunately for me, I learned that the players camping up there are still camping up there and I don't have the ammo to fight them. I have to find another way. There's a guy up there. There's a guy up there. Fuck. What am I gonna do? I have no bullets. Like, what the f- Ay, 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 ay. Oh, I just got shot in the head. I don't know what to do. Well, in my current situation, I realize I only have one play left. And that's to run to D2, hope I survive this sniper, and get to the bunker and extract. Oh my... Oh my god. Okay, but I'm out of ammo. Okay. Here we go, here we go. Okay. I went this way because this way felt the most safe from all that nonsense. Oh my god. Yeah, so there's a maximum of like 15 or on this map or so. I'm not sure exactly. But player scabs can infinitely spawn in the whole time that I'm here. As long as I'm in the raid, player scabs can be spawning. They're, they're essentially endless. It doesn't matter. Holy. I only got like one 80% mag and one 50% mag to get out of here. And we know this is more of a spray gun. We know that. Not really a uh, be precise type of weapon. Luckily for me, some way, somehow, I do manage to get through D2 and into the extraction without encountering another PMC. I'd just like to thank everyone who watched this video, and I hope I was able to give you some insight on how I play Solo Tarkov and how you can improve your solo experience. I'm gonna make a bunch more videos like this, so if you like this video, feel free to stop on my channel sometime and watch the rest of them. Again, all this footage was pulled from my Twitch. Link is always in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.